Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Piyush Agarwal, Advanced RPA Developer and I am back with this new video which is around Object Repository. So this is something you all must have heard uh, newly launched by UiPath. I guess it was launched around in 2021 at the end of it. And this is a really amazing function. Like I am just amazed by it, how we can, it has improved the timing that we used to take to develop an automation. So let me show you an example. I have got, uh, I have created some descriptors over here in the object repository, and I'm going to use them to create a simple automation instead of dragging these activities and creating some selectors like we used to do. Okay. So for example, I will drag this first descriptor, which is a kind of screen that uh, just like you can assume the attached browser we used to work with for any screen. Then I have got this input one. This selector is for uh, typing into the search field of Google, as you can see based on the snapshot. Now let's uh, like uh, I can search for something, for example, Yush Agarwal, LinkedIn. Okay. And uh, then I want to click on that button. So for that, I have got uh, Google search over here. So I will just drag it over here and click activity. Now. I the work that we used to work on, like uh, creating the selectors, making them generic for each and every activity for each, every process that is reduced over here. Now I just need to set the properties of these activities. Now for these, like uh, the basic one that I generally do is put the input mode as similar type. So for these two, I have set is to be same as the same one, the top clear, uh, top parent uh, header, you can say and I will just put it to simulate. Now this would be none and we are done. Now I will just run this bot. Okay, it has closed the browser as well. So for that, what I can do, uh, I will just set it to never close it and rerun it. So now it has done the work, the automation that I was looking for. So see the difference between an object repository, use of object repository and use of normal activities is that with object repository, we create the selectors. We do not create an activity. It's not like a snippet where you are creating the selectors as well as the logic that you would be sharing here. The reusable component is the selectors. I'm not sharing this, uh, Activities, the logic that I have built that bot should open Google uh, browser first, log on, and then search on the input tab, then click on the button. That is a logic with selectors that would be, uh, we can share as a reusable component. But if uh, with object repository, the idea is to share a UI library, a gr group of selectors which any developer can use based on his or her logic. That's how the object repository works. Now, let me show you how we can get started with or working with object repositories. So for that, I will create a new process first. And you see the best thing that I loved about this object repository is that it's very easy to create the selectors and share it with everyone. Now I will just create a new process and let's say uh, object repository demo and create. Okay. So this is the normal workflow that looks like if you have not enabled the object repository for your studio. So at the project level, what you can do over here for in the object pro repository panel, you would see this option coming up, which says to enable the object repository, upgrade your UI automation package and enable modern design experience from project settings. So first I will go to manage packages and here, I have to update, upgrade this uh, UI automation package. This is required to be upgraded to uh, around 20, 20 version or 21. 
for me it's 21.10.5 which is well and good then next what i can do i can go to project settings and i'm supposed to enable this modern design experience you can enable this at a project level that is only for a particular process or at a global level like for the complete studio through the settings such that whenever you create a new process it will itself open with a modern design experience okay so now my object repository is enabled now how we use that here the object repository has uh, i guess three layers first is your application then a screen and the third one is the elements so application is like on what application i'm working on that does not uh, have any kind of relation like any selectors or significance with the application that i'm actually working on it is for the developers to understand that these selectors are respective for this particular application so what i can do uh, i will just create an application i will click on project ui descriptors and then add a new application let's say it's google application with version 1.0.0 currently the application type can only be desktop and click on create application okay now i want to add some selectors to it so here if i select this project ui descriptor and click on plus it will give me an add a new application option but if i select an application it changes to add in a new screen screen is like where the selectors comes in at the first it is your like uh, we use open browser or attached browser activity to indicate the parent selectors of a particular screen in similar way this is your screen now let me just open a google browser on once i will press okay f2 and go back to google give me a second So I will just select this application now and give it like a Google home, Google home page. I can give some disc the description and screen name are again for the understanding of the developers. And these are the snapshots which this uh, application works with. Now, if and if you check the selector of this, like I will click on edit descriptors. You can see this contains the window selector, the app name and the title, and also the URL, which is like your attached browser activity again. Next, if I select this screen now, and again, check the plus icon, now it shows add a new element under the screen. So it is like the specific element over that screen that I want to fetch the, the selectors that I want to work with. Now, let's say I want this input box, just like a demo. So I'm clicking on it. And I can give the any selector for that if I want. Or for now, we are just going with the uh, simple selector. Here you can indicate uh, the modify the selectors to be of simple selector, adding a fuzzy logic to it, or create an image type. Okay, that's up to you. Do this with this, you can create uh, selectors, fuzzy logic. Fuzzy logic is like uh, if the two things are similar, still it can recognize that. Another thing which is very interesting over here is type O so if i just click on this cross now it gives me different symbols of like which type of element are we talking about as a developer if i just select this input type i would know that if we both know as a developer that we are using object repository what are these symbols looks like then we would be able to understand that this particular activity is to be used with the type into only so i will just click on save Oh, and we can just rename it for like a edit click on edit element now rename it to google search input so that it is pretty much indestructible and now i want to add another element so i will just follow up the same process and select this google search button if i want to create an anchor to it i can simply highlight it any anchor with it and modify the uh, selectors based on my requirement i will just click on confirm google search button now since it is a type of button instead of element i would use button over here 
and if you don't know what kind of element it is maybe it's something we don't recognize or it is not available in this list this long list which must have that particular icon then we can go with custom elements element remember this does not really have much significance over the activity over the selector it is more for the developers uh, mutual understanding that what kind of selector this we are talking about now i am done with the creating my selectors and there is one more way more very much simple way uh, say uh, depending on your requirement so here i have got an option capture all elements <laughs> now if i just click on it it asks me to indicate the window that uh, to from which i want to select the uh, all the selectors now as you can see like ui path always amazes me it is able to detect all the selectors from this field which we can use yes i can see that a uh, few selectors are not recognized that we can do manually but all of these most of them would be selected if i just click on capture over here like let me just do it so one by one as you can see it is going over all those highlighted elements and selecting them up that way we would have all our selectors already ready but um, personally as a developer i would not recommend to use this particular feature because you might not need all the app, uh, all the elements from an application and i would prefer personally to create the selectors uh, on my own basis so i can create them more generic and i do have a better understanding of uh, what actually those selectors are referring to okay so for now all these selectors are ready and i can just click on save okay it needs a version let's call it 1.0.0 and save now over here if you can see we have got a list of all the selectors boom and we can utilize them so that's how awesome the object repository is now coming back to the last part like two questions comes first how can i reuse it how i'm going to share it with the other developers okay so for that what you can do you can simply extract it as a library here you can see if this if you click on this icon it will extract this ui library as a different project if i just click on this it will extract both of the files as a ui library project so i will just click on this let's say uh, google ui library and create now it is been created do you want to open it now uh, okay now this particular package contains all the ui library that i want to share with the person what i can do i just need to publish it over here i can either publish it to the orchestrator for it to be used by anyone or to my local uh, local place for i would say uh, personally i have for my experience i would uh, prefer that do not use this is pre release pre release option for the library in ui library go for the complete version only because sometimes i have seen that is pre release version is not detected by ui path and you are trying to import that now over here publish to either you can use orchestrator or just custom for your own personal libraries create a folder and give its path over here and then publish so what it is going to do it is going to create a simple nup kg file which you can import in any of your project like uh, if i go to manage packages then download it components okay it might not be here let me put it back over here so that is saved in packages right so for that we can go do i part packages it is named as google what is the name it's google.ui.library okay it is in components i guess yeah here google.ui.library so do we have this in the manage packages okay it is here downloaded components then it should be available cool so here you can see this google.ui library is available if i just click on install and save 
definitely do it with a project type then what will happen it would start appearing in this ui library option okay it's, then you don't need to this library you can just uh, get this package nub kg in from your system and you can share it with one and another and the second question is why should we even use this we are working fine we are we can create our automations this definitely we are making bots which are working as awesome as possible in our um, enterprise so why do we need this new object repository when what we are doing is creating selectors again and again so the idea is when you are when your application gets modified okay then you don't have to rework on those all those bots which are working with that particular application say for example i have got three bots a b and c all are working with particular application let's say application x now you must have created some selectors for each of these and some might even be reusable or some already like same common like for example a login uh, scenario is there which is would be implemented on all these bots now if that application changes you would have to go to each bot and update all the selectors for each and every process instead what you can do you can create this ui library for the selectors reference this ui library in all these bots to create the selectors to you create your activities and automation and now when this application x changes you are going to just update your library and republish it just like our products that we publish uh, with a new version and update in update uh, the these three bots with the new latest library that's all you are done with the updates with uh, your bot would start working on this new x version of the application that's really amazing and one more thing like if two developers are they working on the same application why both developers go on to develop the same selectors one can create the selectors and the other can just reuse them just drag those selectors and you are done with the work so that's all guys do try this object repository if you get any doubts do let me know you can mention in the comments and you always know you can reach out to me over my linkedin or gmail and i hope you all uh, keep on learning with, from this video and one thing i want to share like uh, i have recently also completed but cleared my ui id so i'm just really happy about that so guys uh, please do like share uh, and subscribe to my channel share this video with all your friends hope you like my video thank you everyone